So let's go over some of the items that you'll need if you want to perform this experiment for yourself. Uh, to make your own sodium hydroxide just from regular table salt. I'm using an aspirator bottle from, this is the same aspirator bottle that I use in all of my cells back here, the silver cell and the copper cell. Um, I've purchased, and this is 50 millimeter by 50 millimeter piece of Nafion membrane, which is a, it's a perfluorosulfonic membrane. It's typically used in um, fuel cells or very high alkali environments. So this is a perfect material. There are other materials you can purchase, uh, but this actually has proven to be very effective for this experiment. Um, you'll also need a platinized titanium anode. So this is titanium that is covered in platinum. Um, the other item that we have here is I've taken an Erlenmeyer flask, and this just fits right over snugly the outlet port of the aspirator bottle, and I've just run this through uh, my wet saw, and borosilicate glass will actually cut right on the wet saw, so very carefully just roll that through your wet saw and cut it, or take it to somebody that has one. There are other ways um, to do this. You can use a piece of acrylic if you'd like, and just kind of drill out a piece that snugly fits over. Um, you can score the glass, heat it, and cool it quickly. Uh, there's, there's plenty of videos online that'll show you how to, to go through this part. Um, and the plan here is to take our epoxy, and we'll mix that up over here. And I'm going to cut the membrane down to size, so it's just a little larger than the outlet port. And we'll snugly glue this over the top. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first thing I want to do is I want to trim this membrane so it's just a couple millimeters in length larger than the opening that I have here. And I'm gonna try if I can, I believe I might be able to get four pieces out of this. Let me see if I can be successful at that. Possibly. be able to reuse that so we'll go ahead and set this aside for now so let's go ahead and mix up our epoxy this is just a five minute epoxy that I bought at the hardware store Now I'm going to go ahead and just lay on a thin bead all the way around this outlet port. Now I'm going to hold this upside down and we're going to let that glue make its way right to the edge. I kind of roll in it around a little bit and we'll go ahead and pick up our piece of naffy on here and make sure that it's fairly centered Now that that's had a few minutes to dry, about 15 minutes, I've trimmed off the excess. And don't try and fold it over. I made the mistake of doing that on the first attempt here. And the membrane wants to kind of wrinkle on you. Now I'm just gonna run a bead right along this inside edge of this glass collar that we cut.
I'll go ahead and place that over the top carefully. Next, what I've done is cut the top off of a 50 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. And the piece that I cut off now fits just inside of this other collar that we cut. And I'm gonna pack inside of here some silicone. That way we have a friction bond and we're not as reliant on our glue to hold up in the long run. Now, I'm not exactly sure if both of these steps are necessary, but just to err on the side of caution to make sure we have good success, I'm gonna go ahead and um, you know perform this attachment this way. And just so we can keep things relatively clean, I'm going to attach a piece of blue tape around the outside here so we don't make too big of a mess with our silicone. And then I have a little stopper to make sure we don't get any down inside of the hole. Then we'll go ahead and pack in our silicone. So here we have about four liters of distilled water and to that we're going to add, I'm using pickling salt. Um, you want to be careful using iodized salt because it has iodine in it. Some salts have potassium in it. So look for a salt that is just uh, ingredient is only sodium chloride. So here we're going to add two pounds of salt to our water and start dissolving that. Now that this is super saturated, I'm going to go ahead and pour the salt water into both of this bowl and the aspirator bottle and fill it up about two-thirds of the way. Now, depending on what type of reaction uh, you're looking for, you can use different types of cathodes and anodes, um, nickel, aluminum, um, lead, depending on what type of reaction. Now, for this reaction, we want to make sodium hydroxide and chlorine. So what I've done is attach an electrical wire to my anode, and I've wrapped this in PTFE tape, Teflon tape, so the chlorine gas doesn't uh, permeate this wire. And we'll go ahead and lower that down into the aspirator bottle. Next, I just have an adapter. This is a 2932 and a 2440, just to connect to my regular distillation equipment. So we'll go ahead and get this on there. Next, we have a thermometer adapter. This will allow us to run the electrical wire out of the apparatus and the chlorine gas will go over through a distillation setup. To this, we'll have, we have this rubber grommet that will slide over the top here. We'll pull our wire through. And next we'll screw down the cap.
This will create an airtight seal up here at the top. And next, into our collection beaker, we're going to add just some distilled water. About one liter. Next, we're going to place in this elbow, and this will bubble through the distilled water, the chlorine gas. So here is my weakest point. This is just a rubber hose. Uh, so the chlorine gas may take its toll on this and just make it brittle. It shouldn't cause too much of an issue for this experiment, but I'll want to keep my eyes on this. Just go ahead and lower that in and connect. whole system together and because I'm in a nice flow hood here I'm not going to worry too much about sealing the joints if I get a little bit of chlorine that escapes um, it'll definitely be vented out I have a charcoal filter outside so we're not uh, contaminating anything with any chlorine here so let's go ahead and get this hooked up to the DC power supply so now I'm connecting the positive lead to the anode inside of the aspirator bottle and the negative lead to the uh, cathode in the larger dish containing the salt water. And we have salt water in both of these containers here. So we'll go ahead and get this hooked up. And we're ready to start our electrolysis. So let's go ahead and get it turned on. I'm just gonna start with 12 volts. Now I'm going to slowly adjust up the current until I start to see hydrogen forming on the cathode in little air bubbles. There we go. I'll bring you in for a little closer look. So here's the first thing I'm noticing that I wasn't expecting is there's a salt forming down in the aspirator bottle. And I've also noticed that the electrical current, amps and watts, are both accelerating over time. So I'm assuming that the electrolyte is heating up some, and that's causing the current to increase. The cell's been on for a little over an hour, and we still don't have any chlorine gas bubbling into our collection beaker. So the system's been on for about two and a half hours and I'm going to go ahead and take a pH test. It's looking like we're around uh, nine. So now we're at three and a half hours. And the pH is getting closer to, looks like about a 12. 11 to 12. So our solution will be fairly dilute at this point. I'm going to pull out about 200 milliliters and we're going to evaporate off some of the water and concentrate our sodium hydroxide.
And while we're doing that, I'm going to take a final pH test. It looks like 13.14. So we're of a highly basic solution. And then we'll get this evaporated down to get our dry sodium hydroxide. I'm going to continue to run this experiment a little while longer. We'll do some tests on the material in the aspirator bottle and I'll get those results up on my Patreon page. Here we'll just run a little test. I have pulled off some of our concentrated sodium hydroxide and in this test tube I have some copper sulfate. Just go ahead and pour the sodium hydroxide in here. Thank you very much for watching and may all your days be blessed. We're not making the salt of the earth here. That's up to you and me.